Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm also affiliated area uh, uh, as an advisor to Nishimura-san. So uh, let me first thank uh, Jack and CSIS, of course, area, but like I said, I'm affiliated with area, so uh, uh, especially I thank uh, my thanks go to Jack and CSIS. Uh, since uh, I, I knew that uh, uh, Jack is very strict about five-minute rule, I prepared a text already. And uh, I, for the sake of uh, saving time, I'd like to read my text. Uh, but when I read this this morning, it took me only three minutes and a half. So I added a few uh, sentences, and that, that's what I'll do. Uh, in my view, new regional arrangements such as TPP, RCEP, AIP are likely to uh, contribute to uh, deepening regional economic integration in East Asia, although the extent and the depth of their contribution differ among them. TPP negotiation reached an agreement on October 5, 2015. It may take some time for the TPP to be enacted because of possible domestic political problems in some TPP member countries. TPP is likely to have important impacts in East Asia as it establishes a business-friendly environment where free flow of goods, services, capital and information is promoted with high level of trade and investment liberalization and a comprehensive and ambitious set of rules on economic activities. Specifically, as for trading goods, almost 100% of tariff protection will be eliminated. While in services and investment, foreign firms will be treated equally with domestic firms. These agreed measures will promote trade and investment among TPP member countries, possibly at the cost of trade and investment for the non-TPP member countries. Non-TPP member countries have an incentive to join TPP in order to avoid discriminatory and negative impacts. Indeed, there are several countries, including Indonesia, Korea, Philippines, and Thailand, uh, have indicated uh, interest or intention to join TPP. RCEP is likely to take some time to be concluded and be enacted, considering the progress in negotiations that have been made so far. Judging from the media reports, compared to uh, TPP, RCEP is not going to be as high level in terms of liberalization or uh, comprehensive or ambitious in terms of rules. RCEP members should try to make RCEP high quality in terms of liberalization and rules in order for RCEP to have a positive and significant impact on its members. One realistic and practical approach that RCEP members may take is to begin with relatively medium quality and to improve its quality over time, uh, like uh, ASEAN way. One important element in RCEP which is not given much uh, priority in TPP is economic cooperation and capacity building. Indeed, there are several members that can benefit significantly from economic cooperation and capacity building to be extended by other RCEP members. Uh, and I like a uh, few sentences here. Uh, I like uh, on the relationship between TPP and RCEP. There are basically two different views on the relationship between these two. One is that they are competing and of course the other is complementary. I think they can be complementary as they are quite different in their contents and characteristics. TPP emphasizes high quality, uh, high liberalization and comprehensive rules while RCEP emphasizes economic cooperation and capacity building. Indeed, I have been arguing that a stages approach to regional economic integration can be adopted in Asia Pacific. The first stage is RCEP and second stage is TPP. Those countries that cannot accept high and comprehensive standards like TPP uh, can use RCEP to achieve economic growth and when they are ready uh, to accept these uh, high uh, uh, and comprehensive standards, they can then join TPP. And indeed, uh, in 2014, uh, China's uh, PEC, uh, as uh, Dr. Wang is associated with, published a book called New Directions in Asia Pacific Economic Integration. I contributed a chapter titled The State of Approach to Regional Economic Integration in Asia, in Asia Pacific. So if you're interested, I'd like you to uh, read uh, this chapter. So uh, then, once uh, uh, 
asset countries, uh, say join TPP, and then expansion of TPP can become FTA after all. But let me uh, uh, finish my presentation in maybe half an half minute by talking about AIB. AIB can play an important role in promoting economic integration in East Asia by increasing connectivity through infrastructure building. AIB should cooperate with other international organizations such as ADB and World Bank to build infrastructure, which should uh, uh, contribute to economic growth in the region as a whole. The establishment of AIB has positive impacts on infrastructure building as it prompted, prompt, prompted already other organizations such as ADB and other donor countries, including Japan, to increase financial assistance for building infrastructure.